Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. For those of you looking for great books on finance, there are links in the description below. So, for those of you who have been paying attention, and for those of you who don't know this, how how did you how did you make it this far, like in in the market? Uh, rich people are buying a lot of Bitcoin. Oh my gosh, crazy, right? I didn't. I didn't. Anywho. Over the course of the last few years, as you might remember, uh, the amount of Bitcoin on crypto exchanges continues to dwindle. Uh, the amount of Bitcoin in wallets continues to rise. It looks like as if, according to analysts and specialists and chartists, that September and October are supposed to be the months where the market basically pumps. That's the idea. Fed interest cut rate, Japan not raising their interest rates. Market typically goes up around autumn. And that leads us into the scrupulous, that's not the word, in incredulous, whatever, price predictions for around uh, December of this year of 100,000 plus per Bitcoin. Dragging it on back, the interesting part is that um, the people who are paying the m most attention, dare I say, like I did that little flickering thing, most attention, dare I say, are the uh, whales, the people with enormous amounts of money. Uh, we have constantly been bamboozled over and over again uh, when it comes to the cryptocurrency market, to prices, to movements, where for some reason, every single day, we keep hearing that whales are buying up Bitcoin. Pretty, pretty simple enough. They're buying up 10,000, 20,000. Oh my gosh, so much Bitcoin's going away. But then you look at the prices and the prices are down. So then I check Twitter to see like, hey, er everyone's excited about the, oh no, no one's excited because no one's paying attention. Whenever the prices go down on, on, on crypto on Twitter, it's just, it's just a really, really sad place because people keep forgetting about the bull run, about the bull market, that things are on the up and up, that Bitcoin was like 15,000 like a year and a half ago and how far we've come as a market. Uh, recently, the news is over the course of the last 30 days, three zero days, Bitcoin whales have been, so we just had, this was, I wanna say about a week ago, 10 days ago, somewhere around there. We just had like staggering Bitcoin whale news as well. I think there was an accumulation of, I want to say like 36 billion. I want to say that that's, the, I don't remember anymore. It's been 10 days ago uh, of Bitcoin from uh, whale wallet addresses. But we also have a, a brand new category, which is becoming quite popular. And they're called permanent addresses. These are addresses that have only accumulated Bitcoin and have never sold. They've only been buying. Many of them are like, been around for like 12 years. I can't imagine having bought Bitcoin constantly for 12 years and having never sold, but I guess that's what happens when you're insanely rich. Over the past 30 days, Bitcoin whales have moved a staggering 404,448 Bitcoin into permanent holder addresses. We typically see that number as 10,000 or 15,000. 404,000 is the brand new number that has gone into permanent holding addresses. The amount of Bitcoin on crypto exchanges continues to ever dwindle. If I can be completely candid and honest with you, and I mean completely, I've been in this market for a while, like a while, while. I've, I've, had, I've had both of these channels for over eight years at this point. As I've said in many other videos, we have yet to ever see this level of, a. I need you to really get it because I think a lot of people don't understand numbers anymore. The level of accumulation that we're seeing is near unholy. It's like actually unreal how we're seeing this much. 
typically during any other bull run, we'll see that the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges falls down by a bit. Typically, like the thing that shows, you know, bull run's going to happen. Or we get news from a company that they now have 15,000 Bitcoin. Wow, they're so rich and fantastic. I can't believe it. That kind of thing. In 30 days, these are not, this is not the ETF wallet addresses. These are addresses that have been accumulating and have been active for over a decade. In 30 days, 400,000 Bitcoin is gone. As I've said in other videos, I think people hear 400,000 and they think like $400,000 worth of Bitcoin. There's literally almost nothing left. I feel like sometimes when I say stuff that I'm not saying it correctly. You know how like, like, like there's like a theory that you can like basically say anything or phrase anything a certain way. And at some point, like, like that'll be the key that unlocks something. You walk into a store and you say, hey. Where's my French fries? And you get really upset with the woman and she's like, I don't know where your French fries are. Or you're like, hey, how are you? I would love to have some French fries. She goes, okay, cool. They're kind of expensive because of inflation, but $4.99, please. Like that kind of, did you understand what I'm saying? Like there's like a certain, I, I feel like I'm not finding the words in English to say to people so that they're like, oh, that's what he means. We are existing in a world right now where these people are buying up all the Bitcoin. Have you ever seen the TV show um, Westworld? If you haven't seen Westworld, fantastic. Last season was a little, eh, but the other seasons were pretty, pretty, pretty good. Without spoiling it, there exists a company in the show who's like disgustingly wealthy. But it's also like so dystopianly wealthy. And I mean like they're, they're not even rich. They're like like... Oh, you can like buy the planet, like kind of money, kind of thing, and this is where personally, this, this is this is this is where I think the world is going, and I don't know if it's because of my imagination. I'm not sure if because other people aren't watching the same documentaries I'm watching, or any documentaries at all, or aren't keeping up with finance, or aren't looking at where all the money's moving, and like this kind of like weird shift into this like parallel dimension. Where people keep hearing, do you understand what I just told you? Like, did you get the numbers that I said? If this had, if this had been the news for the entire year, the market and all of you normally would have gone bananas. We exist on a planet now where we know, and I don't, and I don't mean the ones that are holding, that have gotten it from like, you know, activities. We have a we 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 we're on a we're on a planet where governments are actively accumulating Bitcoin, where they're mining Bitcoin. Bitcoin is being used in international trade. We have countries who have it as legal tender, and other countries where it's legal, you can use it as a form of money. Like we're in the future. This is the future back in 2015, 2016 that we were like. I don't know if we're ever going to get there. We might have to wait to like 2045 to actually get to that point. We have companies like BlackRock who are actively buying Bitcoin daily. There's news constantly about the inflows and outflows from these ETFs. There are certain days, I kid you not, the outflow news is like $8 million out, uh, to, out flew from the things today. And I'm like, did you forget that yesterday there was 84 million of inflows? The money moving in is far higher on any day than any money flowing out. The amount of Bitcoin or crypto exchanges continues to drop. Do you understand that Bitcoin is finite? Because I feel like I'm speaking Japanese sometimes. It's the weirdest phenomenon in the entire world. It is bizarre to me. My only, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of hope. Like my hope is like 
it's, it's less than this. Like, like it's actually minus. It's, it's, it's dwindling at this point. My only hope is that a hundred thousand dollar plus Bitcoin is going to wake people up. I know it's not, and I know. I, I just saw this index. I don't know if it was on Bloomberg or where it was. It was some financial thing. And they, and they, they were talking about the wealth gap. Is a, is So remember earlier this year, we, we, we had another thing that we were talking about, like with the money, wealth gap, blah, 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 blah. The wealth gap right now is crazier than Victorian times. If that means nothing to you, go pick up a history book or YouTube it. It is one of the moments in history of the single greatest divide. That was the beginning of this year. It's worse than the Victoria, the Victorian era. The one that I saw earlier said the gap is so far apart. There's literally almost no way to even kind of begin to try and move it together. It's now nearly impossible. The level of personal debt from people, is st- it's, it, it, it continues to go up. It's staggering. It's actually like terrifying at this point how much the average person has in debt that, that even, even banks know they, because they do it on purpose, that they know that people are never, ever going to be able to pay back. Everything about the system is telling you not to invest and not to save and not to put money away and to consume. Buy. Get more. You don't have enough. You're not happy enough. You need more things. Had a tough day at work? Well, there's Amazon. There's this other website. Go buy something. The amount of money that people are spending on nonsense now as opposed to investing is disgusting. Disgusting. There's a fraction of you, and I hope it's not you. I like to think that people who watch my videos got a little bit up in the noggin. There are going to be some of you in the future who you are going to remember. You know how like, like you have those moments where like you remember a video or like a memory pops back? You are going to remember everything that I've been saying in all of these videos. You're buying too much. You're not focusing on the right things. You're not paying attention how to make not even generational wealth, just just general wealth in general. So many people aren't getting it, and I think they don't want to get it. If prices go up for seven days and then they dip, people start selling. People pretend that there's not like that we're not in this market to all get rich together. It is insane what's happening right now. I no, even now, when I told you about that TV show, like you don't, you're not probably getting it because like you, 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 you maybe can't visualize it. There were like rich, like poor people weren't in the show. Like they just didn't exist. They even had a season where like it was meant to be something like New York. New York was just wealthy people. They, like there was no like, oh, like that area is poor. That area is up and coming. Like everything was was cummed. Everything was was there. The way that have you looked at the way that cities are are shaping up? Even if you look at like I don't want to use the term like gentrification, but like those kind of reports over the course of the last like 15, 20 years, if you look at cities, like like the, the, the way that they're there will be no poor people in these cities. There will be no poor people who like can't even who will be able to do business or buy things in these places. The world is transitioning so fast and I need everyone, at least you, listening right now to pay attention. Why do you think these people are buying up? Mathematically, like think about it. 30 days, 30 days, 400,000 Bitcoin. Drag that out a year. That's that's 4.8 million Bitcoin. That these are these are whale addresses. These are permanent addresses, by the way. These aren't like, oh, I'm gonna buy a tenth of a bitcoin. I'm gonna buy a quarter of a bitcoin. These are like the permanent addresses. You realize that mathematically, like, they won't, they literally won't be able to buy anymore, and they know that. 
When we have these price predictions or even just extrapolating like the idea of Bitcoin, do you understand why it's so powerful? Like why these numbers are, are completely insane? Because no, because I, 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 I think a large amount of people aren't paying attention here. I just saw an article that said 14 years ago, you could have bought 10 Bitcoin for a dollar. Can you do that now? Absolutely not. It's, it's literally impossible. If the whole summer we've been dealing with a $60,000 Bitcoin, and Bitcoin goes over 100K, $200,000, $300,000 during this cycle, where do you think Bitcoin's at the next cycle and the cycle after that in 2032? Now, as far as I can understand, the earth is probably going to still be spinning. Where does that put Bitcoin's price in 2040? You know that like time still goes on, right? I told you that before. I, I, think, I think of it so often and I have to stop myself. When I think of people, friends, and family who I know who like just, they ne never invested. And I think I'm like, you were around in the 80s. You were around in the early 90s. I was like, how much richer would my family be? Being totally candid. How much richer would we be if people had started investing in the 80s and 90s? Two, 2000, 2001. How much money would they have? If you, if you invest diligently in the stock market, it takes about 15 to 20 years of compound and dividends. Like, I mean, like investing. Not like 8,000 8, per month. I mean, like, a, you know, a couple hundred, maybe 1,000 per month. You're like having your job also, like, give you stock options, yada, yada, yada. 15 to 20 years to make between half a million to a million dollars, depending on where you put your money. What do you think is going to happen to Bitcoin's price? Why do you think every analyst is coming to the exact same number, the exact same conclusion, the exact same price prediction for Bitcoin? When we get to the... Can you imagine the year 2050 and 2060 in your head? I, I, I try and do it sometimes. I mean, not from like a beep boop, like robot, you know, walking around kind of thing, but more from like a... If this is where we are now, think about 2011. Remember the world in 2011? A lot simpler, calmer. Look at where we are now, money-wise. The crunch that's there. How much rent is going up. How much land costs. How much everything costs. And the people who are generally unaffected are the people with assets. As their assets continue to go up year on year, even just based off of inflation and or, you know, that, that line, if you had invested continuously for seven years, like that, that kind of thing. is the people with assets. If we see that the world is shifting to a Bitcoin standard, slowly, but rapidly, it's been 15 years, do you think about the year 2040? Do you think about the year 2050? Like, and I mean as far as like how old you'll be, how much money you want to have, how many assets you want to have, what do you want to pass on? Where do you want to live? What do you want to be? How much money do you want to have access to all the time? Think about it. Would you love to have 10000 a month passively, just constantly making you money so you can do whatever you want? Do you want thirty? Do you want 40000 Like, whenever I get these numbers, this is what I'm saying when I was talking about earlier. I, I feel like I'm not phrasing things properly. I, I get it. I'm speaking in English, and those of you who understand me are understanding me. But you you know what I mean, right? Like, I feel like I'm not breaking through. Like, you're hearing, like, this is a microphone, but you're not like completely understanding. I think in about three years, I would say three to five years will probably be the point of no return, not only for crypto, but kind of for everything. This is a personal idea. If we get to a half a million dollar Bitcoin, I think the average person will be so desperate to own any fragment of it That'll be the extra push that we need to actually get to a million. When there's nothing left but crumbs, those crumbs become incredibly delicious and also like valuable. If you pay attention to the trends of buying single family homes, of corporate landlords, of the amount of people who are buying. I told you earlier this year, earlier this year, I said if, if they get to a million Bitcoin in the ETFs, at some point they're going to have 1.5 million, 2 million and 3 million. There are people who've been buying Bitcoin nonstop over the course of the last decade. This is never going to stop. The people who are like buying are going to continuously buy, even if it's just fragments later on. 
If Bitcoin gets to a million dollars per coin, $6.7 million per coin, this is, the, the gap is no longer a gap, it's a canyon. It's like 18 grand canyons. People, there are going to be, there are going to be, there are people now who will never be able to catch up. That's what I, this is what I find so terrifying about so much of the financial world right now. People don't save. People don't invest. They don't put money away. There's no saving for the future. They, and, and, and I mean, even as far as like collecting, like, you know, I mean, listen, this is, this is totally real. The, the, the returns on comic books, on Pokemon cards, on sports cards has been astronomical over the course of the last 30 years. The people who don't even do that. There are people now who don't have jack. They don't have, they, they have nothing. And I'm weirded out about a world where Bitcoin goes to multiple, I mean, Ethereum, $45,000, XRP, $112 per coin. Some of you are wealthy. And then you got to think for a moment that you, once again, you'll have friends and family who just didn't listen to you, who refused to invest. Do you understand like money's being made right now? There are so many people who don't pay attention to any of this when we're in a bear market. I don't even consider bear markets bear markets anymore. People were asking me on Twitter, like the, 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 there was a coin a couple of weeks ago that I was mentioning that I, that I was, I was going to buy. And people were asking me, like, like, was I waiting for the price to go down? And I was like, no. No, like the price is nowhere near where its previous all-time high was. There's so much money to be made. There's like literal generational wealth to be made. And people aren't paying attention. I, and I'll say this last point. Last point, last point, last point. I'm almost desperate. And I, this, this is true. I'm telling you. I'm almost desperate to see a 100000 a 300000 a half a million, and a $1 million Bitcoin. I'm desperate. Because I want... Other people to be like, I get it. I got to get into the market right now because I don't think that anything else is going to do it. If you've been paying attention, this channel and my other channel are daily. When do we get news like this? Daily. They're going to own all the Bitcoin. There's literally going to be nothing left. The next two halvings, for those of you who have completely forgotten... The having in 2028 and the having in 2030, 2032 is like the, 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 the literal point of no return. Every time that a block gets mined, there's like a reward for mining and validating and, 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 and securing the network. The amount of Bitcoin that will come out per block when that happens is just going to be Satoshi's. So like, you know how like you have a full Bitcoin then you have half of a Bitcoin all that comes out is not even a full Bitcoin anymore. This is why I think we're seeing this level of accumulation right now. It's, it's been a genius way to accumulate. If you can make sure that prices are fluctuating and going down and you make sure that it's not in the news and we keep seeing, and, and I mean like, like mainstream news, and you keep seeing the staggering amount of accumulation and people just don't pay attention, they're going to own everything. They're, I mean, this is not a... An over-exaggeration. <laughs> There's only so much Bitcoin. We're going to start hearing, we're going to start hearing eventually, I give it two years, that these same exact addresses over the course of a 30-day period only accumulated 35,000 Bitcoin. It's because Bitcoin's price is too high and there's only this much left. We live in crazy, crazy times. Crazy, crazy times. I, I, I know some of you are listening. I know some of you are paying attention. But gosh darn it. 30 days, 30 days, 400,000 Bitcoin. Yeah, I do hope sincerely that you've all enjoyed. Hope you got something from it. Hope you're all saving. Hope you're not getting into debt. Hope you're putting money away. Hope you all are have already made your emergency, uh, you know, uh, bank account, emergency savings. I've also been saying that over the course of the year, don't forget the world's super shaky right now. There's a lot of nonsense and stuff going on. You got to make sure to insulate yourself. 
Um, thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And yeah, I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.